friends. We are somehow almost at the end of 2023. Uh, don't talk to me actually. I don't want to talk about how that's happened. Where has the year gone? <laughs> And today we are going to be doing the end of year book tag, which I do every single year. I think it's a good way to look towards the end of the year. My end of the year feels more squished than usual as well, because if you guys know, I'm going to Costa Rica for like 10 days and all, I think I'm there, nine, 10 days. So that takes up a good chunk of November. And then December is its own beast. <laughs> With all the content I want to make in December, it's like, it, it, it's not even like part of the normal year. It's the whole new entity. I wanted to do this now and I did think, oh, maybe I'm a bit early to the end of your book tag. Like, am I, am I pushing it a bit? Like, is this a bit early? Because I think often I do like to do these a bit early. I get quite excited for like new eras. <laughs> I always say I love a Monday, I love a start of a new month, I love a start of a new year, like anything that's a new beginning, I love. So the way to go, okay, this is the beginning of the end of the year, like is, it gets <laughs> excited. Well, guess what, people? I get excited about small things. But the creator of this tag, Errol Bissett, did just did the tag on her podcast with Raylene at Books Unbound, if you listen to that. So if the creator of the tag has done it, I am justified. <laughs> in doing it. So it's basically just a little tag to chat about the books that I'm hoping to read in the rest of the year. All of my content is planned so I know roughly the books I'm going to be reading towards the end of the year. Okay but shall we just get into it and chat about the end of the year book tag and see am I am I ready? Can I actually feasibly read all the books that I need to read in the re in two and a half months at the end of this year? We'll, we'll see. Right now what I want you to know is you're going to fail miserably. We'll see how strong seasonal affective disorder kicks in. Hopefully it won't be that bad. I'm going Costa Rica. That should, <laughs> that should tamper it a bit. <laughs> Keep the depression at bay. Anyways, love that. Let's get into the tag. The first question is, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? And my answer for this is usually a hard no, because I never start books and don't finish them. Well, unless I'm DNFing them, but DNFing, I DNF maybe like, let's be honest, two books a year. Like I don't, I don't DNF. And once I've started a book, I'm finishing it. I'm committed. I'm there. I'm writing it out. I don't, I don't DNF. But I do have one book <laughs> and I wasn't going to tell you about it when I didn't realize this was a question in the tag. And now I have to be truthful. I just, I wasn't going to mention it. I wasn't going to tell you about it, but let's, let's, okay. I have read, have I still got the chapter? Yes. I've read the first 87 pages of The Other Side of Mrs. Wood by Lucy Barker, which when I was starting it, I started it this, the other week and I was like, oh, this is the perfect like autumnal book. Oh, what a great time to read this. Turns out the video that I was supposed to be reading it for, I like, I'd got it in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> that I needed to read this book and I didn't. So buzzword of on vlog that I just did. I went through, I reacted to the books, right? I built my TBR. I didn't need to read one of the prompts for buzzword a thon. If you haven't seen, I did a video where I completed the buzz year long buzzword read a thon in a week. And one of the prompts is something with other in the title. And I'd filmed that, you know, the opener to that. I have to film it before TBR Cluedo and whatever. And then for some reason when I was making TBR Cluedo, and then thinking of what my TBR was for this video. I I thought I hadn't read a book with the word other and I thought I had to read this for a while, even though when I'm filming that, I I don't put this on the TBR. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. And then I watched the clip back once I was like 80 pages in and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I don't need to read this. You sound rather stupid to me, you know. You know, you're sort of person. If you had a brain, you'd be dangerous, dear. And the thing is, I put it on TBR Cluedo. Otherwise, I just wouldn't read this this year. I would just like shelve it and read it whenever it came up. But I am doing a video at the end of this year, which I'm getting increasingly daunted for, where I finish, I read every book from TBR Cluedo that I haven't read yet this year. Well, there's, there's a fair few of them, guys. <laughs> There's a fair few of them. And I don't think I've got any videos coming up uh, towards the end of this year that I'm going to fit many of them in. So... <laughs> So I am gonna have to read this by the end of the year. And listen, I was enjoying it. I enjoyed the first 80 pages of it. It wasn't amazing, but I think it had a good vibe to it, a good autumnal vibe. It's Victorian, it's seances. I was enjoying it, but now I am gonna have to finish this. I don't know why I thought that. I, that was just something, that's, uh, my brain is not cooperating at the moment. So I am gonna have to finish by the end of the year when I do that TBR Cluedo video. Listen, December is stacked. I'm pretty sure it goes like Goodreads, Mystery Thriller Vlog, which I'm gonna have to read like 10 books for, and then the TBR Cluedo Vlog the next week. How am I gonna do this? <sighs> Everyone take a deep breath and please believe me. And also Wrapped Up will be back, which will be a vlog a week. December, 
I'm just accepting I have no life, <laughs> which is always December. But I, yeah, I'm excited to finish this. But yes, we do have a book this year that I have started and not finished that I need to finish by the end of the year. Next question is, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? Okay, so the next two vlogs that I'm doing are quite autumnal. What do I, I don't want to tell you the whole TBRs for them. What, do, what ones do I want to tell you about? Okay, I'm going to tell you the one that I'm most excited for. I'm actually, this is what I'm going to start today. I'm ridiculously excited for this, but like a lot of you probably won't be excited for this because it's not out yet. <laughs> it doesn't go out till next year. The title is The Antique Hunter's Guide to Murder. This is an arc I very kindly got sent. What antique would you kill for? For. It's enough to bring tears to my eyes. <laughs> no matter who you are, where you come from, if you've got a dream, there's no one out there that can stop you from achieving it. So this is a murder mystery. I'm gonna be reading some murder mysteries this week. Um, I usually do this vlog in November, but obviously I'm away a lot in November, so I'm doing it <laughs> in October. Murder mysteries are very, very autumnal to me. I love, you know I mean, I love murder mysteries. So I'm gonna be reading murder mysteries this week, and this is one of the ones I'm gonna be reading. This doesn't come out till February next year, but I'm, I just can't wait any longer. If you don't know me, if you don't know me, guys, <laughs> You don't know me. I am obsessed with a show called Bark and Hunt. I've admitted this a couple times. It's one of my quirks. It's a show on BBC in the UK. Usually it's like aired around lunchtime for like grannies and students, the people who watch this show. There's two teams, they get 300 pounds to spend at an antiques fair, they buy three items, and then they take them to auction and try and make a profit, okay? If you've watched Bargain Hunt, you know that it's a slightly embarrassing me admitting this, but I have watched every episode that's available on BBC iPlayer. I've run out of episodes to watch. The obsession that I got with it was was borderline unhealthy. I don't know <laughs> yeah. how I'm going to integrate in society after this. <laughs> so I don't watch Antiques Roadshow, which is like another antique. I only watch Bargain Hunt, but this is like pitched as like I think the daughter. I think the author of this is the daughter of like a very well known expert on Antiques Roadshow. But it's murder mystery around antiques. I. This might be, this is like a five star prediction. This is a five star prediction. I'm so excited, guys. I'm so, ah, I'm so, ah. <laughs> I'm so excited to read this. I think it's gonna be incredible. It's murder mystery vibes. Oh, I think this is just, this is so autumnal. And then I'll tell you about one other book. I think I've told you about this already. I think this was on my full TBR, but I'm gonna be reading Finally Sleuth It by Brom. This is one I saw a lot of people reading last autumn and was very jealous. <laughs> that I wasn't reading it. But it's set in Connecticut in 1666 and an ancient spirit awakens in a dark wood and we're following a recently widowed outcast who she turns to this spirit for help and it's gonna be witchy, it's gonna be, I mean I love, I don't read enough, like what era is the 1600s? What's the term for that? Stuarts? No, you know how like 1800s is Victorians? What's 1600s? Okay, yeah, this is like Charles II era. But then also you're just out of like, well, I mean, this isn't set in the UK, it's set in the US, but like in my brain, okay, so we've just had Oliver Cromwell. <laughs> we've had a way with the monarchy and the monarchy's back. And it's, he's the king who brought back partying, if you don't know. <laughs> I used to know all the lyrics to that song. Come on, Megan. Old Ollie wasn't jolly, he was glum and he was proud, being miserable as sin, only sinning's not allowed. When Ollie died, the people said, Charlie, me hearty, get rid of us, a lot of people around the party. This is actually what they call the monarchy restoration. It's actually, it's sort of like a huge celebration. Anyways. If you don't know what that is, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry you've suffered. Anyways, I'm excited because I do, I love witchy stuff set in this era. I think it's just rife, rife for the, t ripe, ripe, right? It's amazing. <laughs> Shut up, Megan. He has illustrations, which I'm very excited for. I think this is gonna be my flavor of horror. It's got a vibe to it. It's got, I'm so, I'm like foaming at the mouth. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to read this. I think I'm gonna love it. So, um, yeah, this, these two this week are finally bringing the autumn vibes to me. Also because, like, it's finally autumn in the UK. It was freezing yesterday. I had to whip out the heated blanket, guys. It was f f freezing in the UK. <laughs> finally. It's been, like, 26 degrees last week or something ridiculous. Oh, next question. Is there a new release you're still waiting for? Let's look at my reading tracker where I've got all my releases. I don't know if there's a release I'm still waiting for that I'm gonna read if I'm honest with you, before the end of the year. Let's have a look. Oh, I am gonna be reading The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett before the end of the year. I didn't love, love, love The Appeal. I mean, it was a five star prediction and it wasn't a five star, but I did. I love Janice Hallett's stuff. And I'm, you know, The Twyford Code was like a 4.5 and The Mysterious Case, The Upton Angels was a five. So I'm very excited for The Christmas Appeal and I am gonna be reading that before the end of the year. Bookshops and Bone Dust. <laughs> 
I'm very excited for Bookshops and Bone Dust. Legends and Lattes, we'll get into this, but it's probably still my favourite book I've read this year, and it was the first book I read this year. So, <laughs> but I don't think I'm gonna read Bookshops and Bone Dust before the end of the year. And Heartstopper Volume 5 comes out in December. <laughs> Already pre-ordered that. I'm so excited for that. But again, I don't think I'm gonna read that for the end of the year. Like, obviously it would take me like 30 minutes to read it, but there's no vlog it would fit in before the end of the year. And I, I feel like we've waited this long that I'd be letting you down if I didn't vlog Heartstopper Volume 5. So I don't think I'm gonna read that before the end of the year. But those are probably the ones that I am most excited for. But yeah, probably only reading The Christmas Appeal, which out of those three, it's the one I'm least excited for. <laughs> But it is that I'm going to read it around Christmas time and I'm excited to read some Christmassy mysteries around Christmas time. I always love doing that. That's like my, that's another one of my traditions. I love reading Christmas mysteries. That's what Christmas is about, isn't it? Yeah. What are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Okay, I've seen the next question and I'm, I'm going to save a book for the next question. So three other books that I want to read for the end of the year. Let's be realistic. What do I think I'm gonna read for the end of the year? Okay, one of the books I most wanted to read for a couple months now is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. I am 90% sure this will be nominated for the Miss Goodreads Mystery Thrill Awards. There's a small chance it could go under horror. It's been on some horror lists, but that would be wrong. <laughs> that would be wrong, Goodreads. Call you up and tell you that would be wrong. I'm hoping this will be nominated for the mystery thriller and it means I will read it for the end of the year. We're following Laura Hope, who everyone thinks is a mass murderer. Her whole family was murdered. And then we have a character who's like looking after Lenora in her old age and she starts typing her story on the typewriter. Me and Riley Sager, wh whatever I think of the, the book, we always have a good time. Riley gives me fun, come on. Like, Riley's a mainstay. I love his, his ideas, I love the synopses and I just really, I've heard so many good things about this one. I'm really hoping hoping that we're going to be successful. And then I need another book. Oh, what am I realistically going to read? See, a book I would love to read before the end of the year, but I can't see it happening. <laughs> but let me just say it. No, there's no video that this could, this could. Okay, there's like one video, <laughs> which I'm going to be reading one book for, that there's a small chance, which if I can read this book, I will pick this book, but chances are small. But um, Starling House by Alexi Harrow, I, I really want to read this before the end of the year. Like I have just, oh, it sounds so amazing. It's gothic. And I've pitched this book to you so many times. How embarrassing would it be if I don't read it? <laughs> um, I mean, I probably won't. <laughs> But I would love to read this before the end of the year. I'd love to read this in autumn. It comes out at the end of October here in the UK. But there's this house that nobody in the town of Eden remembers when Starling House was built. But everyone agrees it's best to let this ill-omened house and its lonely last heir go to rot. I loved The Once of Future Witches by Alexi e. Harrow. This has footnotes. <laughs> I love footnotes. <laughs> I love footnotes and I just think the atmosphere and the vibe of this is going to be incredible. So I would love to read this before the end of the year, but mm, the chances are quite minute. <laughs> and then what other one do I want to say? Oh, I know I'm going to read this before the end of the year and that is Lost in the Moment and Found by Shawna Maguire. These are always a five star for me. Listen, it's short, which I love. <laughs> It's 146 pages and I know this one is we're tackling more difficult topics in this edition of the Wayward Children series but they're always a five star. It's a five star series for me now. I give every single book five stars. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> love the Wayward Children series. Sean McGuire's writing is just impeccable. Yeah I just I'm very excited to to read this edition. I'll be reading this in a couple weeks so yes. Okay that's my next those are my three. Two of which I'm definitely well one I'm definitely reading, one I'm 90% going to read, and one I'm like 10% gonna read, if we're honest, but I really want to read it. Okay, and then the next question was, is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favourite book of the year? And there's only one answer for this, let's be honest, The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman. Oh. <laughs> Again, this is another one I think is gonna be nominated for Mystery Thriller, which I'm gonna be reading the top 10 nominees. This is the fourth in the Thursday Murder Club series, which is one of my favorite series to ever exist. And I love it incredibly so much. I love her, I love her. That's real. Even though she's fictional, it's real. And that's important to me. And I have heard nothing but amazing things. It's got like a 4.6 average rating on Goodreads. Let's see what it actually is. Cause it's, this will be changing rapidly cause it just came out. Cause last time I looked it had 22,000 ratings. Let's see how many it has now. It might even be up to like 30. It's now got 27,000 ratings and a 4.59, which is like, 
still amazing. That's like a ridiculously high rating. Um, so we're following this, I mean, you all know, <laughs> only cast of characters who solve mysteries together. And I know, I know I'm gonna cry throughout the entirety of this book. And like some people say, oh, I mean, I was talking to uh, Katie Colson about this and she was like, oh, I, I don't, I'm sorry that you know that like everyone's crying because sometimes that can make it less impactful. I don't think that's gonna be the case. <laughs> I think, I think I'm going to be waterworks throughout the entire thing. So yeah, like I said, Legends and Lattes is the first book I read this year and I don't think anything else has topped it for me in terms of my favourite book of the year. I think this could. I think this could. I think this could. If anything is going to top Legends and Lattes, I think this is the only book that's going to do it. Okay, now I'm going to top. And then the final question is, have you already started making reading plans for next year? Yes, I have. <laughs> So in terms of how far ahead my content is planned, all of my videos are planned for January, all of my vlogs are planned for February and into March, and I've already planned out some long-running series. I've got two long-running series of vlogs that I think I'm going to be doing over the course of the entirety of next year. So that's, that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> which I am very excited for. There are two series. There's one that's going to be a vlog every month, um, which I'm not going to tell you anything about. And then there's one that's going to be probably four vlogs throughout the year, which I have teased. It's going to be to do with classics and retellings. I want to get into my classics era. <laughs> I want to be like a classics girly. And I want to really look at my taste in, in retellings because it's something I've been thinking a lot about lately. Although I think we know what it is, but I'd like to explore that a bit more in depth. But yeah, I've got a lot of exciting videos coming next year. I've got some really fun, like, stupid vlog reading vlogs that I really want to do. <laughs> They're filming with excitement. I mean, just reading vlogs are really a what filming with excitement. Making reading vlogs, filming reading vlogs, and I've got a lot of really exciting ones coming for next year. I haven't figured out goals though. I haven't planned out goals which, yeah, we'll come up with them, at, I mean, when it comes time to it. But yeah, I haven't really figured out if there's any set goals that I want to aim towards next year in my reading. I don't think, I don't really like stringent goals, but yeah, I haven't planned those out yet, but I have started planning out a lot of my reading. I've planned out like really like a quarter of my reading for next year, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> we don't really talk about that. But yes, the answer to that is yes. End of year book tag, the answer to that is yes. So there we have it. That is my end of year book tag. I hope that was vaguely interesting to you. <laughs> Um, I'm really excited for the end of this year. It's my favourite time to make content. I have got so many fun videos coming throughout the next couple months for you and I hope you're excited for them too. So let me know any plans that you have already for your end of year reading. Do you have a book that you still think could become your favourite book of the year? Let me know some books you'd like to read before the end of the year. If you got to the end of the video, comment the purple heart emoji. Although, is there a fox emoji? There's a fox emoji. Yeah, there is. Comment the fox or purple heart emoji because I think it's gonna be my favorite video. Um, <laughs> and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.